Hello tech world, this is Tech Thoughts. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a new VHDX and attach it to an existing virtual machine. As always, if you prefer written tech info, the corresponding article for this video can be found on the Tech Thoughts blog by clicking here or by referencing the comments below. Let's go ahead and get started. We can approach creating a new VHDX via the GUI or by using PowerShell. Uh, the script that I have over here on the left looks a little bit daunting, but I think if we just take a moment to look at it, you'll find that it's actually not that complicated. We've got a couple of variables we're going to be using this script that we will set to null at the beginning. We've got a bunch of user prompts uh, just asking for general configuration questions about how the new VHDX is going to be set up and which VM it's going to. Then we confirm with the user and say, are you sure that everything looks correct? And if they are, we'll go ahead and basically run one line. So all the stuff that you see at the beginning here is all leading up to just one line, which is new VHD. And here we specify how big that VHD is going to be where it's going to actually go, whether it's dynamic or fixed. And then once the new VHD is completed, we'll go ahead and run one other PowerShell command, which is add VM hard disk drive. And we'll add that to the VM name that we specified earlier in the script. And then we'll output a little bit of information to the user, showing them the final results. So all the script is really doing is asking the user some questions, confirming that those are correct, creating the new VHD, and then adding that VHD to the VM with a final output of the results. So we'll be doing that with the GUI first. So all we have to do is come into Hyper-V Manager and select the VM. The VM can be on or off to add a new VHD. It doesn't matter. We'll go ahead and right click then click on settings. And we'll be adding some hardware. So we'll be selecting that add hardware up here in the upper left. So if you're on a generation two, you're gonna be adding a SCSI controller. And if you're on a generation one VM, you'll be seeing an IDE controller here Either one is appropriate based on the generation that you're utilizing. Since we're on a generation two VM, we'll be adding this SCSI controller. I'll be adding a hard drive, so I'll make sure that hard drive is selected and click add. We'll be creating a new virtual hard disk instead of specifying one. So we're being clicking this new button on the right here. And that's gonna open up the new virtual hard disk wizard to prompt us for some questions, which is essentially what we're gonna be doing over here in the script. So I'll go ahead and click next. It's gonna ask us about what type of uh, VHD we wanna create a fixed size, dynamic, or differencing. So a fixed size is going to create just what it says, a fixed size. So if you specify a 40 gig drive, it's going to take up 40 gigs. If the VHD only has 5 gigs, it doesn't matter, it's still going to take up 40 gigs of physical space on the drive that you specify. If you click on dynamically expanding, this will grow as the usage of that VHD changes. So for example, you were to create a 60 gig dynamic VHD disk, it would probably only be about 40, 50 megs at the beginning, but as you added data to it, it would grow based on how much data was actually added into that VHD. And a differing, differencing disk is a little more complicated. You may say, what is a differencing disk? Excellent question. There's a great TechNet article here on using differencing disks, but the long and short of it is, is that basically you associate a parent disk, and then you can make changes to the differencing disk, such as in this example, we take an existing parent disk of Windows 2000 server, and then add differencing disks on different VMs and add different changes, such as adding Internet Explorer 5.01 or adding Internet Explorer 6. And those can exist on different VMs so we can track changes and we can preserve that existing parent image. So that's a differencing disk. So we'll be clicking dynamically expanding disks here for this example and click next. And we'll just say test disk. And we'll specify where that's gonna live. So based on the storage that's provisioned for your hype, uh, you need to choose a location of where you would like that VHD to live. I'm going to put mine in VM data drives, this is the D drive that I have on my hype, into VM data drives and select that folder. So new VHD called test disk located here in D VM data drives and click next. I'll be making this a 40 gig drive since this is just a test example and I'll click next. Get a short summary screen just showing you everything that's going to be created and if you're happy with that you can go ahead and click finish. And it'll just take a moment to provision that disk. Notice that this was extremely quick because this is a dynamic disk, it didn't actually create a disk that's very large. So let's go ahead and open up a folder and notice that under D, VM data drives is where I specified, it created a new disk. But since it's dynamic, notice that it is not 40 gigs, it's only about four megs. This will grow as I add data to it, but it will never get any bigger than 40 gigs. Just keep in mind that fixed disk creation takes a little bit longer as if I created that 40 gig as a fixed, it would have taken a little bit longer to create as it has to write zeros to the drive. So that was pretty short and painless. Now let's take a look about how that's gonna actually happen over here in PowerShell. 
So we saw that the GUI asked us a couple questions and the script is gonna be asking us a couple of similar ones such as, hey, what VM do you wanna attach it to? What is the name of the new disk gonna be? Where is it going to live? How big is that disk gonna be? Is it gonna be dynamic or fixed, so on and so forth. So you may be asking, why would I wanna do this through PowerShell versus the GUI since they seem to be doing very similar things? Well, the thing about this is it's always a good thing to understand how things are working behind the scenes. This script that you see here can be easily modified to, for example, add a new 40 gig hard drive to all the VMs inside of your environment. The GUI is great for accomplishing one-off tasks, but for truly powerful automation capabilities, you really need to be well-versed in how these things are accomplished inside of the shell. So let's copy this real quick and run it in a new ISC window. And as we actually run the script over here on the right, I'll be talking a little bit about what it's doing over here on the left. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this by clicking Run Script. Okay, so note that the first thing it asks us is to enter a name of the VM to create a new VHD for, which we see right here. Now, error control is important. So the, notice that the first thing that we're gonna do is check to ensure that the VM actually exists. When we do that, getting the VM and selecting all the names that we have available on the hype, and if we find that our user input matches one of those using the like, then we'll go ahead and execute the rest of the script. However, if that VM is not found, we'll let the user know, hey, we could not find that VM, so we're not gonna be able to add a VHD. So we'll just put in a VM name over here and we'll say, doesn't exist. And we get an output saying, hey, we couldn't find that VM, so we're not gonna add a VHD to it. So just a little bit of error control goes a long way to making your script a little bit more usable. So we'll go ahead and click play again. And this time we'll enter an actual existing VM name. And because it did find that, it went ahead and let us continue on with the remainder of the script. So it's gonna ask us to enter a, a new VHDX file name. So we'll call this WSUS or PDC2 underscore WSUS is the name I want for the new drive since it's gonna be holding some WSUS patching information. Then it'll ask me where to actually store that and I'm going to be storing that at this location. I'll go ahead and enter that. I want it to be a 60 gig drive and I do want it to be dynamic. Okay, so everything we just saw in the user prompts is what we saw over here on the right. Just asking us some questions and loading those inputs into variables. And then I get the confirm create new VHD, which is outputting some of that variable information to show the user, hey, does this all look right to you? So we're gonna be creating a new VHD in DVM data drives. It's gonna be called this. It's about 60 gigs in bytes. It is dynamic, and it's gonna be attached to the following VM. And if all that looks good, we can type in yes. And note that we say, hey, if this looks, if this is yes over here, we'll go ahead and execute the new VHD and depending on if the user inputted dynamic, we'll run it with a dynamic switch. Otherwise, we'll run it as with a fixed switch. So I'll go ahead and click yes over here. And notice that it's creating that. And we get our final results right here. It happens very quickly because this is a dynamic disk. It doesn't have to write a lot of information to the drive. So what just happened is it created the new VHD, which is where we get this output here. And then following that, it attached the new VHD to the VM that we specified and I'll put it a final results. So now we can see for all of PDC2, these are the three VHDs that are now attached to that. We have our original C drive, which was PDC2. We have the test disk that we have created earlier in the GUI example. And now we have PDC2 WSUS, which I just created via the script. I hope you found this example on adding a new VHD to your VM via the GUI and via PowerShell useful, and make sure to check out the corresponding written article on the Tech Thoughts blog.